I'm not entertained by a nigga eating fucking cereal out of a shoe. Regardless if you think it's cool, you think it's funny, to me, it's coonish. FBCC, I got to my right. I got Maul. I got Barry. I got soul fucking with his wire. And then I got <laughs> Trey over here to the left. Let's get it popping. First, first question, fellas. Just like that. Just All like right. that. Let's get into it. But you said I was fucking my wire. Like I had a wire on me or something. No. Hey, <laughs> I was trying to get hey. info. Hey, yeah. you know, get it, give him some duct tape. Man. <laughs> give him some duct tape. Good over there. We got D out the house. Of yeah, course, man. it's the boy He Hoarders podcast. This is episode twelve. Twelve. And we are thing, tapped bro. in. D nice in the building. Go ahead and let them know where they can find you. Instagram. Let them Inst know who you are, even though everybody yeah, knows yeah. you. Yeah. Instagram FBCC Bay Area. Uh, Carpet Diem the Boutique, uh, fourteen twenty Broadway, downtown Oakland. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, man. That's it. How the uh, shop going so far? Nah, the shop's going good. I just left the other day. Uh, Tuesday we putting down the floors, and then we should be putting up the shelves. The store should have been open in March, but uh, dealing with California and permits, and we had an old building, and already I'm seventy thousand out the pocket and uh, building up somebody else's building just to try to make this dream happen. Damn. That's how you no bank it, loans. That's straight out my okay. money. Like straight no up. loans. I don't owe nobody. That's right. Out the give gates, give right. the uh, give the listeners Big a location. Shit. Location is fourteen twenty Broadway, what Oakland, inspired, California. What inspired the store? Um. So Carpe Diem, as you know, sees the day, and the thing we wanted to do was in our store. It's a real boutique. Like every every brand that's in the store is from people who actually make their own clothes. It's nothing you can go somewhere else and buy. You can't go to the mall and buy it. Right. So. That was my way of, you know, bringing something that's different and also still keeping with the... Because people say they got a boutique, but that's not what I know a boutique to be, being yeah. from the East Coast. Like, when you had a boutique, people went to a boutique because they didn't want what everybody else had. Right, for But sure. now you got boutiques that got the same stuff that you can get in the mall. That's not a boutique. That's just a corner store, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, yeah, for sure. With with that, like... Cause I think we talked about it before. You said you letting, uh, like... Dudes that's getting their own shit off, you yeah. letting it in the store. Yeah, right? so if they, so say like a young dude um, is starting his own brand, it can't just be t shirts. I mean, unless it's like really crazy dope t shirts, but they really gotta be like making full, you know, full tech packs, full everything. Right, and sure, they're really getting really. off the ground and trying to get their brand out there. And with the, the clientele that I have, they'll have great exposure with Warriors players, Raiders players, yeah. you know, and, and so on and so forth. But having that kind of exposure and it's hard for a lot of young people or people in general to get their stuff in a store. Right, for sure. Stores want to like tax you hella much or, you know, it's not like you could walk and be like, yo, I make my own t-shirts. I make my own jeans and stuff like that. I just want to, they, they ain't messing with you. Right, yeah. I don't want that. I want, I want, I want to inspire that. Right. I want to inspire people to not work for somebody else. Work for yourself. Is it just apparel or is it also footwear? It'd be footwear too, but, um. With the footwear, it's only footwear like we doing like the grown man fours, five sixes, the J's, and then custom kicks. But like I'm not trying to deal with getting the Royal Jordans and the Yeezys and none of that. I still want stuff that's like handmade. Like it's it's the whole idea behind the place is for somebody to come and get whatever they want. Right. Like you can come in my store and be like, "Yo, I need a suit. We gonna be making bespoke suits, custom tailored to you, mm -hmm. and we trying to do it for under three hundred dollars, which is unheard of." Right for sure, hell yeah, <laughs> for sure. You know what I'm saying? Because like you can't just wear one type of style, like, and you shouldn't just be wearing suits to court. You know, you should have right. a good suit for whatever right. event. Exactly. I'm gonna I'm pull up and come get me a suit for sure. Yeah, yours gonna be like five hundred though. <laughs> I need, hey, I need three M joint though, the for real three M joint though. Come do three M. I need the three M thing. The whole thing or like the stripes like, or something. Nah, like red carpet. Really nah, it's gonna be like dark gray. But when you pull up to the red carpet the and they start oh, flashing, flashing three M. Like, oh, that playful. nigga shining. <laughs> <That nigga's> <laughs> With the bow tie. He's taking that puffy shiny suit the, thing to the nah, whole new gotta, level. But you gotta, but you gotta, I know gotta, what I'm getting, nigga. You got to get turtleneck, though. <laughs> and don't copy. He was pushing the turtleneck. Hey, he's and don't copy. Oh, yeah, neck. I might get the turtleneck with the uh, Heat Horgers, Ho Orders logo right here on the neck part. <laughs> 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 All right, D, so one don't thing go, we yeah, know yeah. about you from back uh, that you still do is the Customizer 101. Explain that. All right, so the Customizer 101 class is to teach anybody who from any age group who wants to learn 
how to take a shoe apart and put it back together or, you know, any basic customizer tips where they might want to do this to fix up some of their old shoes or they might want to do this as a permanent thing or even a side hustle to make money. So I started doing that because nobody was doing it at the time, teaching. You know, you ask a customizer, yo, how you do that? They just straight ignore you. So I said, you know what? Let me do affordable classes where I could teach these young kids. Because at the end of the day, you got to think about it. Like, when I came up, we had a lot of stuff to do to kill our time and to keep us out of trouble. Right, sure. I feel like now they cut so much. Already, this administration has cut art programs in damn near every school. So art programs are being cut out. Kids can't even uh, facilitate their imagination, right? They have nothing for them to outlet their creativity. Right. So I feel like if they ain't going to do it, somebody has to do it, right? And if you have a God-given talent, which I do have, um, why not share it and try to bring other people up? Because at the end of the day, uh, I started doing this a while ago. I used to even do YouTube videos to teach people how to do shoes. And I used to get emails from a dude like, yo, I was able to pay my rent this month because of the stuff I learned on your YouTube channel. Right, and, that, and that feels right, good, man. you know, because I have an affinity for homeless people. Like, I, I think it's a shame that we live in the richest country in the world and yet we have so much of a homeless problem, especially here in the Bay Area. This is the sixth largest economy in the world. Hmm. The Bay Area alone is the sixth largest economy. In San Francisco, this is, we're like the richest city in the United States, but we have like the worst homeless problem. And that could easily be fixed with tax cuts from, you know, take ca tax, tax from the rich and give it and open up shelters and stuff like that. But we don't do that. You know, this is a capitalist society and it's, you know, each man, one man for itself. Hmm. That's right. For shit, dropping jewels. Our first ever interview with anybody was with D. Yep, straight up. We were still in the magazine. Yeah, yeah. Soon to come. That shit started don't, don't off think really Don't think you're sober, God damn it. We coming. You know, yeah. Again, you know what I mean? And that was dope. Like, y'all reached out to me, and I said, yeah, come on in. Yeah, you man. know what I'm saying? Like, I try to help as many people as I can. I'm like, especially people of color. Like, we got to do that. That's right. the one thing people be like, oh, people hate on each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to hate on nobody. Right. But I'm also not for people <laughs> scamming people either. <laughs> you cool over there? <laughs> Y'all got me under the light. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. They got my man over there on the rotisserie. Since we talking about scams, I seen you had like some shit going on on IG with Mag Park. What happened there? <laughs> my bad. So with Mag Park, um, some dude DM'd me. And he was like, yo, do you find this fishy? And it showed the uh, Instagram page, Perfect Kicks. And if you don't know Perfect Kicks, they make like the best movies where they even pass in the light test, everything. And if they don't get it right that time, they'll make another version. Hmm. So I was like, that is odd. And he was like, not only is the store following it, but the owner of the store, his other page is following as well. So I was like, yeah, that is kind of odd. And then I was linking back to Rob Dollar Beats on YouTube because for like two weeks, this dude was just breaking the whole game now. And then he was talking about he was on a Skype call because when you have a lot of followers on YouTube, what happens is that these Chinese websites will reach out to you and they will send you the best uh, fake shoes to review so people that follow your YouTube channel can go to their website and buy it. So he said he was on a Skype call and uh, when they're on Skype, there is more than one person that works for the company. So like probably where Derek is sitting, it was another person on a Skype call with a consignment shop. So with that consignment shop was ordering the Yeezys in bulk and he owed that feed over, you know, the, the, the sound and stuff kind of like spliced with his and he heard the consignment shops ordering those. So then he started making videos telling people what he heard. And one thing what he heard was he had the course fours, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So his course fours, they have a flaw, but he didn't know what the flaw was because the real ones didn't come out yet. Mm -hmm. So... Okay. What, what happened with the Skype call, the Chinese people was like, okay, you got the night. Well, he calls them 98 percenters. I don't know what China calls them. So he started naming his, the shoes they send them 98 percenters. So what would happen with his 98 percenters, they'll be 98 percent close to the real. It'd be one thing off. But China does that on purpose because of the contract they have with consignment shops. Where So the consignment shops will have that floor fixed, but the 98% is that floor won't be fixed. And that way you'll be able to do a real fake video where you're showing the 98% is with the actual fakes that are actually like 100% close. Yeah. So then you're thinking you're looking at two real shoes. Well, one is fake and one is real, but that shoe that you think is real is actually fake. And, and consignment shops are ordering them. So then with the Mag Park thing, I started thinking... 
if you think about Yeezy drops, we all know that the Yeezy drops are very limited in stores like yeah. boutiques like Nice Kicks. Um, there's another store in San Francisco that gets the Yeezys and also the Adidas store sometimes get the Yeezys. These stores only get one size run. So they get like 12 shoes. So say if Nice Kicks get 12, the other store gets 12, that's 24. The Adidas store gets 24 pairs, right? But Adidas is not going backdoor to any shop. They can't. No, so then you even count the stores in LA. It's like three stores in LA that get it. All of that don't even add up to 100 pairs of Yeezys. So how do you have resellers that have 100 pairs of Yeezys in their picture? It doesn't make sense because not, there's not one store that gets 100 pairs. No Adidas store even gets 100 no, pairs. No Adidas. Right. No store. store. At all. And it's then you see people pairs. lying saying, oh, they steal them from the factory and they send them. That's impossible because of quality control. Now, one thing people don't understand is after Nike got busted in like I think the late '80s, early '90s with the child labor, yeah. all sneaker companies stopped owning factories in China. So what they do now is they contract it out to other factories. So this way, when you know Dateline gets on there and they be like, "Hey, they got children working here in these sweatshops," then that doesn't come back to Nike because right. they can wash their hands and be like, "We don't own that. We just did a contract with that factory." Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But so what Nike does is they'll have an American that will work in oversee the project because why would you pay millions of dollars to have your product get liquidated and made and then sold for $50? That doesn't help your benefit of fake shoes. No company benefits from counterfeit products. Right. That's why so, they go to the extra step to, to stop it. You think Kanye is cool with all these uh, fakes of his shoes? Hell, hell no. Nah, fuck no. Nah. Kanye would have a fit, right? right? Yeah. But no. So think about it. So say somebody said they got it from the factory. So you mean to tell me that factory was able to send you 100 real Yeezys? That means it's 10 stores that's missing their, their, their drop. They're not getting their drop because of quality control. Right. So there's impossible that any of these resellers can get, just them even having 20 is ridiculous. But if they have 100, that's impossible. Hmm. You know why? Because they're getting it from third party. And that third party is one of those uh, rep, uh, replica sites in China that's, they'll be like, you know what, I got 10,000. They was like, well, we'll send you 100 pairs. Now, think about it. If they, that, especially with the Yeezy 350s, those was the, the V2s was the easiest to fake because they're all cotton. Right. So you say, you know, like, uh, what's the Zebras? They're reselling for 1,400. Now, you got top-notch, spot-on fakes of it. Right. 100 pair. You paid $100 per pair. You got $10,000. You got 100 pair. Once you sell 10 pairs of those, them other 90 is all profit. All right, for sure. So. Easily. All profit. You didn't even got to sell them for 1400 People like, damn, Flight Kids got them for 1400 nice. This dude got the legit right. for <laughs> 1000 Right. He just sold 10 pairs, made his money back. Now he has 90, 90 pairs to flip at whatever price he wants to sell. Easy. And now you're, you're caught. But then this is when the game get real twisted. If you bought a, kick, a shoe from Flight Kicks, what is it, Flight Club? If you mm. bought a shoe from Flight Club, would you think it was fake? Hell nah. No. You would think it's real because Flight Club has that reputation. Yeah, exactly. You would, you exactly. probably would buy a exactly. shoe from Flight Club and not even legit check it right. because exactly. you automatically assume. Yeah. Now, imagine all these top-notch uh, consignment shops, not the little mom-and-pop joints like Prestige and the ones around here. We're talking about the, the, the corporation-backed ones like uh, Stadium Goods. That's a corporation backed. They're, they're backed by billionaires. Uh, the owner of the Cavs uh, brought into that store. So now these stores, if you bought a shoe at Stadium Goods, would you think it's fake? You wouldn't think it's fake. Right. You, wouldn't even, even, you wouldn't even second you guess wouldn't even them to second even. Guess it. So you, Dan you, you wouldn't even legit good. check it. But if you buy some shoes from Bubble on the corner, you're going to legit check it. Right, but sure. most of these people are going to go to these stores, and they're going to be like, I need to get a legit check. They're going to, the, to those guys to tell me if the shoe is real or fake. So they say, nah, this is legit. And then the other thing with consignment shops that they get away with this, consignment shops, so-called, all of their shoes are consigned from someone else. So now they can make up a fake name, a whole thing. Yo, we got this shoe from fucking D-Nice. Here, these are his shoes. He's selling them for this price. We're going to get 20% of that. Now, if they come back and be like, yo, this shoe was fake. They was like, what? See, we consigned this from this person. They wash their hands of it. They're exactly. like, hey, a right. fake got through the cuts. It got through the cracks. We didn't do it. We it was a consignment. We don't own none of our shoes. Yeah, yeah, right. That's what it is messed up. Who's to say a person is qualified to authenticate a shoe? 
Exactly. Right. That's real. another thing. People be talking about uh the uh real versus fake page. Like yeah. they say he used to sell fakes and stuff like that. I think somebody who used to sell fakes is probably a good person to let you right, know right. what's real and what's fake. fake. Yeah. You know, people hate on him for that, but I'm like, if he has a uh you know, he has a history in dealing with fake factories and knowing how it goes down, he might be a credible source to tell you if it's real or not. But at the end of the day, how if they if they got the same now we talking about Yeezys because mm -hmm. they're cotton. Like it's different when we talking about Jordans. Like if we talking about somebody got some Ben Fives, we gonna look at that leather and be leather, like, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Nah. Them ain't no Ben right. Fives Stop because playing. it's it's, le it's it's levels to leather. Yeah, you know what I'm right. saying? It's quality, grades, weight, but uh, cotton, cotton, engineered cotton. Yeah. They ain't nothing but engineered socks on rubber soles. Right, sure. And now they even got the fake boots, and it's the real boots. So they even got the boots. So you can't even tell no more about the boots. Damn. Yeah. So it's. It's just like why even pay resale for them joints anymore? You feel me? It's like, man, bro. It's people want a, a status quo, and that shoe is like a status quo to people. But at That's this exactly moment, why is. are you buying that shoe? And no matter what, people gonna think they fake anyway. The shoe game is true. Like or no matter what, game. you are gonna have to prove yourself about yeah. the shoes they, every yo, time. Yo, they you even come shoe. with a receipt. The shoes even come with a receipt now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I seen fakes that came with a receipt from the San Francisco store. Niggas, niggas buy receipts all day. Duplicate receipts. Yeah, the whole yeah. shit. The, the Chinese place, the Chinese websites are sending them with the receipt, receipts? and then they'll ask you. They like, do you want a credit card receipt to print out, or you want the regular store receipt? <laughs> I Dude, believe man, it. I've, I believe I've it. learned so much watching these YouTube videos, and these dudes is really breaking the game down. That's crazy. Hey, so so shoe being game someone that, like the that game, bro? being someone that reconstructed sh reconstruct shoes, yeah. What could you tell from a boost? Is a boost going to last long? All right. So that's actually a good question. So the thing with boosts, every technology, no matter what, has a lifespan. Mm -hmm. Boost has a lifespan. Boost hasn't been around for 10 years yet. Right. You think about it. If you, like, we take some of our OG retros from the 90s, the shoes crumble because air and oxidation deteriorates the rubber that they use. Because a lot of it wasn't rubber. It was like... Uh, Whatever I don't even know what to call it, but with boost, it I uh I've had people send me pictures already of their boots already broken down. They're like they're not even comfortable anymore. So after boost dies, it's just a hard ass styrofoam. Oops. Who's gonna be the shoe in ten years? Who makes the next run? The nigga not here yet. He does, that's what I'm saying. Who makes the next run? It's just not here yet. You mean like the company? The company, yeah. At the Nike. end of the day, Jordan always Nike. Nike. What I'm so saying, be there. you say signature shoe. I'm just saying anything right so now. Adidas came. What, Adidas came like a now, wave. He's still gonna be there. It's Nike. Oh yeah, Nike yeah, gonna no, always yeah. be on top. Think about it right now. Like, but as far as signature shoe, no. I don't ten think years we, from now, we, what's we, gonna we be the new wave? Them. What's gonna be the new hype to y'all? Because if you saying Boost gonna be dead, Nike's gonna be there regardless. It's gonna be anything except Boost. I don't think Boost is gonna be dead, but I don't think they're gonna be as prevalent. I think it's going. What Kanye was to be like fifty, like. He ain't Jordan. Yeah. Like, nah, we buy sure. people forget why we wear Jordans, especially like these young kids don't know shit about Jordan because they didn't right. get to see him play. So that's not their fault. But we wear Jordans because we was like, yo. Right. Yeah. And when he crossed over and pushed Russell with his hand and yep. crossed him over and hit yep. that so last shot. So don't make shot, me do you at right. any given time. Hey, <laughs> real shit. It, I may be going out on a limb saying this. It may be Reebok. Fuck it could be here. anything, but and that's my that's hey, see what my question this. is like: Who makes the next run? I'm, I'm if if saying, Adidas no, dies, the only time can tell. But would you be Baby, surprised? Would shit. you be surprised if Kanye went to another brand? No, I don't think Kanye yeah, has. Yeah, exactly. I don't think he has brand loyalty. Exactly. No, I think he's gonna take. It, it won't but, be but, Boost. That's all I know. Also, but also even with the Kanye thing, how how off, how you know what I'm saying five years from now, you think Kanye would still be the same name he is with these hype beasts? You know what I'm saying, like. Will he still be prevalent? Like, oh yeah, I love Kanye. Or will they treat him like they treat Lil Wayne now? It might be Lil Yachty Nautica boots. I don't think it'd be Lil, Lil, any of those people because those are niche artists. Like Kanye West was really, uh, he was like one of the dopest artists yeah, we yeah, had yeah, in a yeah. long time. Like yeah. he, because he's still a he dope came artist. In, yeah, he's still right, a, right, I, I don't like the TLOP album though. It had no replay value for me. And I and I and I love my Dark Twisted Fantasy. That's like my favorite Kanye album. But uh, getting off subject, but like Little Yachty, he's a niche artist. Like Kanye made genius music. You know what I'm saying? And he made it at a time where gangster rap was real pop, and Fifty Cent was the man. Right, and yeah. he came in and let dudes who went to college, who wasn't thugs, feel like, yo, you know what? It's a, it's a space for me here too. Yeah. So I think a lot of people <laughs> fuck with him on that on that aspect of it. 
But I also think it's gonna get to the to the level where maybe he's not even people like man, fuck that old dude. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, cause this this new generation they getting more and more disrespectful. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. So maybe and what you saying, like, like like little Yachty's a niche artist? It's 2017 niche artist is just having a, yeah. they're having well, a long but, run. But right I think. now, nah. Yeah. But right now it's little Yachty. Next year we might not be thinking about little Yachty. He might be maybe. some other nigga, yeah. little pocketbook or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little, pocket little purse, purse. purse. <laughs> little purse, Ew, purse. Yeah. Yeah. It might be. Little, little man, <laughs> little, <laughs> hey, hey, little man bag. <laughs> little man bag. Nigga might be wearing a skirt. Oh, we already got that. We got rapper. I know facts though. In ten years, it won't be boost. Nah, facts is still gonna be Nike. Look at what Nike. Even if it ain't Nike, it won't quick, be boost. No, but real quick, look what Nike just did in this last week. People sleeping like, and I always give Nike hell because I feel like they was slacking because they the innovators, right? You always got to respect Nike for the mm. innovating. Those fucking um, power adapt laces shoes. Them oh, shits, yeah. them shits are like Air Monarchs with automatic laces. Those <laughs> shoes, that whole technology should be for just uh, handicapped people. You feel me? Like people who can't. Like they did the fly stage, ease. Stage, they yeah, should be for, yeah, and they should be affordable for those kind of people. Like, we don't need no power laces shoes, right? But right. what they did though, they got the um the marathon. They just did the marathon, and the dude did the marathon in two hours and twenty four seconds. Broke the record by two minutes and eleven seconds. So now he ran the fastest two uh um twenty six mile marathon. Nike did that. The Boston Marathon that just passed two weeks ago. First, second, and third place was all Nike runners. No Adidas runner was in there. And Nike has a shoe, I think they call it the Vapor Light Elite or something. The shoe has a cushion in that's rivaling Boost. But so Nike is not selling it. That's They're what the, giving, that's what the runners like, was wearing? That's what the runners was wearing. So, and if you look, if you look it up, you'll see they, they show the breakdown of the sole. The shoe is not a, a appealing shoe. Like, it doesn't look as good as the Ultra Boost where you can say it look like, oh, I can wear that with everything. Yeah. This shoe looks like it's just for running. Run, like, run, it ain't run. got a lifestyle aspect to it. But they only made, I think, nine pairs right now. And they're giving them away for people who run their 5K. You get a chance to win them. Oh, they should start, they're going to start selling them, but they didn't start selling them yet. But that shoe, the cushion on that shoe, they say is shitting on Boost. Man. So Nike already got a cushion in. While we sitting there talking shit about Nike, and everybody like, oh, Boost this, Boost that. Nike sitting there like, yeah, wait till they see these. You know what I'm saying? We going to kill them. Nike. Nike's still killing them performance-wise. The new ACG boot doesn't have a lace. It has like a, it's inspired by a paper bag where you just pull back and it laces <laughs> yeah. up by itself. Malibu, nigga, he he listening to you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> nah, that's Adidas is just having a run right now, but Nike will always be king. Yeah. yeah. Always. All Nike right. research is always king. For sure. Yeah. Nike. And when people even start talking like, nah, Adidas got it right now. No, Adidas has hype. You're a hype beast. Right, you right. fail to realize that Nike sells way more shoes than Adidas. Hey, they Jordan so, by himself damn near sells more shoes than Adidas. They so hype that they believe that the shoe is comfortable. Yeah. They believe that's why they got the shoe because it's comfortable. Yeah, they're like, it's the most comfortable shoe in the world. They, 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 they buy that shoe because Kanye West wore the all white ones on stage and after that, the sales went up because nobody was wearing them shits two years ago when Boost dropped. At all. Nobody. Exactly. Them shits was in Foot Locker for $49, $39, buy one, get one half off at Chic because they couldn't sell them Boost shoes if they so comfortable. Till Kanye West had them on, then y'all was like, oh, like people make themselves like, oh yeah, the Yeezy 350s is fire. They make themselves believe that. Yeah, yeah. They're That's like, no, it they is are. dope. I like it. I fuck with the vision. <laughs> I fuck with the vision. <laughs> fuck with the vision. At the end I of the day, if you want any it. shoe to get hyped, just put it on the artist. Shit, on the artist, it yeah. got to be a hype yeah. artist. Yeah. Like I don't be, think yeah. no other the artist CD. has that. No other artist has that pull that Kanye has though. Kanye has like Kanye has the hype beast's heart. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't do. know, yeah. he tapped in, and it's crazy because Kanye is. 39 years old. He's got 16 year old kids like looking at him like he's their age. Like. Kanye is God. And yeah. usually an older rapper don't get that respect yeah. from these young kids. I don't so, I, I was gonna say Jay Z, but I don't even think Jay Z would get that. No, Jay Z nah. don't get Jay Z. He'll he, get he, it from us. He, yeah, yeah, but, sure. but not from these young kids. Like Kanye was literally got like third graders, like, I need the Yeezys. Yeah. Yep. This shit, it's third graders in the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. S yeah. dots is on the way back. Y'all tripping, yeah. man. Hey, <laughs> they retro them, I'm on so it. So to come back to to the reason people buy shoes, it's it's mostly cause it's limited. But the real reason people buy shoes to me is the resale value. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's true. Like people, as soon as you gotta think about it, as soon as all these blocks, they all do at the same time. Yeah. They're like, oh, these Yeezys gonna be super hard to cop, or this LeBron, like the uh, the uh, out of nowhere LeBrons. These gonna be mm. only one store had them uh, in Thirty uh, Fourth Street in Manhattan. The only store that had the LeBrons. People was fighting outside for the fucking shoes, right? <laughs> and and then they tried to resell them. Nobody wanted them. They had the 14s ugly. We don't even want them. So you did all of that, and you're not even going to make your money back. Right. You know what I'm saying? So 
that's how it is. They, people say, oh, it's limited. How limited? Yeah. Is it like super, super limited? Because if it's zebra <laughs> limited, then I can get 1,400. But is it cream white limited? Then I can only get like 300. Exactly. 400. And that's why LeBron's ain't they, selling right now. And, because and they, sure. you can't resell them. They, any yeah. shoe that doesn't yeah, have a no, resale no. value now sits. Exactly. I bet any, any money the pure money for is sitting. They'll be there till. I next month, next month. Yeah. They gonna, I, I, hope, I, hope, I hope they do. They hit the outlet. <laughs> I hope they do. As soon as they won 20, on. I'm on it. The cold part is this year we're really getting dope shoes and, and, and nobody's appreciating it. And, and nobody's appreciating but, but it. But tell me you don't love that. Pure as, money. Not, as, as, yes. as a real sneakerhead that yeah. really knows what? the nostalgia. Like I'm back in my East Bay days. I said, y'all can hate on Boots or you want it Yeezy. I'm happy for it because I'm buying Jordans. Man. Two pairs, three pairs. Less than retail. Less, right? I, I see Premier like full size run. I said, wow. Pure monies? Even the $400 <laughs> Jordans is sitting. I went to, uh, uh, what is it, Shoe Palace. They had the white ones and the olive green ones up there. The I Pinnacles? Like, the Pinnacles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pinnacles you can't sell them. They're already $400. Nobody, yeah, yeah, no yeah, reason. Right. Nobody yeah. wants them for $500. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not gonna happen. We don't even want them for four. We're trying to, like, we waiting. Y'all fucking it up by buying you like, can't resell them shit. for retail at all. You you got to sell them for less. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, what you think dope. about those those premium fives they've been releasing? With the dude, I don't even know, know why those are 400. Let me tell you wow. how. Let me tell you what I think about those. Exactly. Those shits ass juice. You know why? Ass because juice. them shits is basically the bend, and the bends wasn't four hundred dollars. So you right. can't give us already a premium quality of jades. You gave us the the brown twos, right? Those was fire, good leather. Mm-hmm. What what they cost when they had dropped? Uh, ben twos was like what two twenty two one ninety, right? One ninety, I think it was. It the wasn't four hundred. The Ben fives, four hundred. The Ben fives, right? What was they like? I think All like Ben was, was, was they was around two hundred. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the Ben fives look better than the. Uh, they about to drop another pair of all black fives, and they got like the fucking pleated leather and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're gonna be four hundred. Nope. You, st- why are you gonna pay for that? Don't pay it, and they're gonna drop the price. <sighs> Right, it ain't nobody buying it. Buy it. it no reason. How you feel about the Don C's? They're not worth that damn fucking three fifty. You seen the Arctic Orange joints? Yeah. They want what is it three fifty or four hundred for our size? Then two fifty for GS size GS for size. GS, and then for a baby like one hundred and fifty. Is it with Some, the, something like that? Fuck out of here. Them is just <laughs> twos with fucking quilted leather. The exactly. leather don't look no different than the other J's. That's but true. you know what it is? This is this is where the sneaker community is hurting itself. Because y'all paying resale for horrible quality Jordans, even some of the Jordans, mm-hmm. the remastered, them shits wasn't remastered, them shits still had flaws. Remastered was just remarketing. Yeah. That's what yeah. remaster stands for. I ain't never seen it. I haven't seen a remastered remaster Jordan, yeah. Jordan yet. Yeah, we're gonna re- <laughs> we're gonna remaster this Jordan, and we're gonna sell. the fifteens. They remastered them, and they said it had dual air zoom in the shoe. So it's a dude on YouTube who cut shoes in half. He cut the shoe in half. It had one Zoom pocket in the back. Nike had to give the one guy his money back. But you lied. You told us it had the double Zoom like the real 15s. Is that right? Nightwing? The OG. No, that's another dude. Oh, okay. It, no, Nightwing. Night, Nightwing. Nightwing. It was Nightwing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Nightwing. So, uh, but my 15s that I got, because I got all the OG 15s, they got the double Zoom. And I paid 140 for them. And so I you're paying told 200. You to check your 15s. You still you're paying $200 for a yeah. shoe that's I made didn't. cheaper than it was when you bought it before. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up, Shout, Shout out to Nightwing. He just out. dropped a shoe this morning. Yeah, yeah. the Grand Black. Tomorrow. Grand Black, right? Yeah. yeah. He dropped it today. I so that's big. Yeah. Wear Shout, out to Nightwing. Shout out to Wear Who's Testers. Who's Grand Black? That's Jamal Crawford, right? Yeah, for sure. Brand Black? Is that Jamal Crawford? But do y'all know Sketches owns Brand Black? Oh, okay. y'all didn't know that, did y'all? Nah. Hell nah. That's, That's why you here, gems, right? So, out of all the brands we talked about, I I do want to ask you mm-hmm. what what's up or what happened with Under Armour. Mm. So, Under Armour, I designed. I didn't design any shoes for them. I did. Um, they had. They sent me four or five pairs of shoes. The Curry Three was one of them. It was the new Swift joint they just dropped that Migos is promoting. Okay. And then it was uh, the Primo. Those three, and it was another shoe I can't even think of right now. So it, it, we were supposed to do a project um, that was inspired by a koi fish. So because of Steph Curry, when he was in college, they went to some restaurant and had a koi fish pond. He used to, like, dare his teammates to jump into the koi fish pond. So that was, like, the little story. So I designed the colorways for them, inspired by that. I got paid for it. But I don't know if it's going to drop. I don't care because I got my money. But, <laughs> right, right. If, but I don't know if it's going to drop for the simple fact that 
the Curry threes are so bad, and they're not they're not trying to sell them. They move they already moved on to the uh, three zeros, yeah. and the Curry four is about to drop. So um, they paid me, so they might be like, "Hey D, can you do it for this collection? We or got some not. better looking shoes where we can really use your talent." So um, you'll be down to do it. Yeah, I, 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 Under Armour they got hey. good people there. The only thing what that Under Armour issue is like, and I keep telling them, we're in, like you really have to pay attention to the trend. Like in school, we learn trends, how to see the trends nine months in advance and everything like that. And one thing that they're not paying attention to, the trend right now is minimalism. Nobody wants to see a big ass logo on the side of their shoe. At all. Right. Even think about it. When Kanye went to Adidas, right? His first shoe was the 750. If you looked at the 750 on the wall, you would never say that's an Adidas shoe. Hell no. He didn't want their, <laughs> he didn't no. want their logo on the shoe for two reasons. The main reason he didn't want it on there because everybody fuck with Nike. Oh, and he yeah, was yeah, like, I don't want sure. the big ass three stripes on there because people don't like that. So See what he did was put the Adidas out. sign under his strap. That's where the Adidas logo was at, hidden under the strap. So you got to unvelcro the shit, then look like, oh, that's an Adidas shoe, right? Then he put on the uh, front of it the YZY on one shoe, and then on the other shoe, which was the right shoe, which would always be the shoe that if you put it on the wall, you don't really, you always put the left shoe. Right. And that was where the little Adidas leaf was at. He did that on purpose for two reasons. One, he was used to, he was just with Nike and they didn't know how it would do. And they said, you know what? Let's let me do a design, something like I would have did for Nike, but let me not put your logo all over my shoe. Hmm. And it worked. Got it. Because it didn't look like an Adidas shoe. That's yeah. what's up. And that's what Under Armour needs to learn. And with the Curry 4 from the prototype that I saw, they finally listened. So the Curry 4, the Under Armour logo is like this big and it's only on a pull tab on the back. Oh, okay. And the upper, like, to me personally, if this Curry 4 doesn't do good, it's like either the hate is just too crazy. I had nothing to do with the Curry 4. When I went to my interview at Under Armour in Portland, um, I had already did the Curry event. I think y'all was there yeah, at, yeah, at um, yeah. the Den, right? The yeah, Den, yeah. yeah. Den. Nope. So we did the Curry event, and one of the product line managers from, uh, from there, he was there at the time. He was the one who had the low top threes before the threes even had came out because we was launching the Lux, the Luxes. No, exactly. yeah, he yeah. was telling me, he was like, yo, the Curry 4, he was like, I don't really even like basketball shoes. I'm a weird sneakers. I'm not a sneaker dude, right. but the Curry 4 is nice. So the following two weeks, I went to Under Armour, and my interview was with Peter Rupi. Peter Rupi is the head of Under Armour footwear. Like, okay. it's okay. Kevin Plank is the owner, Peter Rupi. Got it. So that's who I had my interview with. So I'm, when I'm talking to him, like, you know, I told him, I said, uh, you, I heard the 4 was dope. Could I see it? Because right. I want to see it. Right, right, I want to see if this dude is lying. Because right, he's yeah. like, yo, I don't like sneakers. But when I seen it, I was like, yo. We got one. So I asked Peter, and he was like, oh, no, we don't even have that shoe here. And I was like, I was like, you know, because I forgot the dude's name at the time. I remember his name. I was like, just say Mike. Mike told me it was dope. He was like, yeah, we don't have it here. But, you know, so we kept talking in the interview. Then he was like, um, so uh, do you want to work here? And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, work here in like Under Armour right here in our footwear department. Right. And I was like, um, if I could work like from home and like report to y'all. Because <laughs> right, yeah. right. at the time I still had a quarter left in school. And then I really like being from being in the military and like living far away from my kids. If I had to move with the, you know, on deployment, I promised them that I wouldn't move again. So like whatever I do, I have to do it in the Bay right, Area. Right. Yeah. So at the time he was like. I just wanted to see if you was open to it, but we're going to do a project instead, see how we work together well. And that was the Koi Fish project. But um, so, you know, we had the interview, we was talking, because he used to work for Nike, and he was actually behind the air pressure, the okay. Nike air pressure, which okay. is one of my favorite shoes. And I have five of the OG ones from 85 in my sneaker room. And um, after the, after, you know, he kind of, I guess he was filling me out. And then after, you know, so after the interview was over, we were sitting, chilling, talking with the rest of the guys. And then he came out of nowhere with the Curry 4. Okay. So he came with the Curry 4, and the, uh, the sole was still like a plaster mold. But he had the uppers where you could put them on to see what it, the different what, uppers what, what would look like okay, on the sole. Okay. The sole was crazy because the sole was like 3D. And the, the midsole, think about the Jordan 11s, but it's a little thicker. Okay. So the midsole has the SC logo, and it's like sculpted in the sole. Okay. Uh, so that's okay. how it's gonna be. And the bottom was like it looks like it's gonna be an ice sole like the Jordan Elevens. Mm. So then when you flip it over, the uh the sole it goes like this and it cuts in like this deep and comes back this way. And then this whole part is like where the carbon fiber would be. It's yeah. like almost like a half an inch deep. Oh, okay, okay. And then the upper would kind of remind me of LeBron nines. It had like the uh, you know, the heated plastic, yeah. but with fly knit. 
So oh, it had like okay. the knit. The shoe looks, it's a good looking shoe to me. I think it's a good looking shoe. I think if they don't sell that shoe, they're in a lot of trouble because that it means either the hate or even the, the, the backing of Donald Trump at that one time. Right, it's either it the hate is just so so bad that the shoe can't get love, then they're fucked. Because the shoe, I think it's a good looking shoe. I would wear the shoe even if they didn't pay me or even sent me the free Damn. shoes. Especially I would still, here. I would actually buy, buy that, that shoe. shoe. Yeah, especially I would, I would, I would really buy that shoe because I. I'm like, yo, this is a good looking shoe. Now I'm gonna want to see what they look like now. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to see. That's what, what, what these brands like. need to do. They need to stop, like you said, the dude that you had talked to that told you about the Curry Four. He worked at Under Armour, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he don't even like sneakers. No, he don't even. So like sneakers. what the fuck is you working for a sneaker company? They need company to look at the culture, like <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so this is the Man. dope thing about Under Armour. Nobody even knows the story. So um, remember the '73 win season, right? Yeah. So. Before the season started, right? So the Warriors went up to like 5-0, and right? Mm. So in my head, I was like, because the year before, I was like, man, Under Armour. Sh- I, 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 like, I was like, I'm going to buy these Under Armour shoes. Like the Curry ones, I said, I'm going to support. I, I like, I, I fuck with the Warriors. I'm going to support. I put them on the Foot Locker. And then I looked at that big UA logo <laughs> on the era, And I was like, ugh. Man, these are like rejects. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the you yeah. know, like the Spalding shoes. Yeah. Like I was like, uh, I was like, you know what? They feel kind of comfortable, but I can't do it. So I gave it back to the dude, right? I tried to. So with the Curry Twos, I was like, them is alright. They look a little better than the last one, but they still got that big UA logo. And in my head, I wanted to customize them. So I said, you know what? I'm a. I put it on Instagram. I was like, yo, if the Warriors go 20 and 0, I'll customize some Under Armour shoes, some Curries. Warriors went like 22 and 0, right? So I did the cork. I put the cork. Oh, I did the cork yeah, curries yeah. Oh, to remember, celebrate. Okay. Motherfuckers. Yeah, Ooh, to wow. celebrate the twenty wins and no <coughs> losses, right? The best start in like NBA history, right. right? So I did that, and a dude from Under Armour, his name is Dre Wright. He used to work at Def Jam. Okay. He was a top exec under thirty in Forbes for Def Jam for the work he was doing at Def Jam. Damn. Now he works at the entertainment department for Under Armour. That's what's up. So he seemed. My picture somehow, even though my page was private, right? He sent me an email from London. He was like, and you know, when you do shoes, people send you emails all the time. They always want some free shit. Right? Yeah, like, I don't do free for nobody. If right. you're a millionaire, don't even right. think about <laughs> fixing your lips to act. <laughs> <laughs> so I get this email. And he's like, Yo, I like what you're doing with the curries. Yo, you made them. Sh- you made them joints look wearable with jeans. Like I, I didn't think that was possible. Right? He was like, I work for Under Armour, whatever, such such. I, I. Give me your number. I don't give nobody my number. Give me my number. I want to call you. But right now, I'm just going through customs in London. I was like, oh, this dude, I got he big ball and shit. He in London and customs. So I was about to, de- I was about to <laughs> delete, delete it. shit. <laughs> Before I pressed delete, I looked and it said his name at Under Armour. I was like, oh, he really worked for Under Armour. Okay. I said, he legit. I said, okay, he legit. So I said, bet. I gave him my number. He called me. He was like, yo, yo, you the future. He was like, yo, your work is dope. He's like, yo, I want, I want to work with you. I was like, yo, whatever, man, I'm down. So he, so from there, he started screenshotting all my work, and then he he sent the pictures to Cam Newton. So Cam Newton was like, yo. So Cam Newton back's like, yo, because he was like, yo, I got a new dude. I'm recruiting for Under Armour, and he wasn't lying. Like after that, he was like, yo, give me your address. I was gonna send you some stuff. Yo, the very next day to show me he was serious, I had 14 boxes from Under Armour Damn. of gear. Kicks, everything. I opened the door. The the UPS dude was like, I got more. He's like, it's boxes. <laughs> like, oh, Yo, that shit took up my whole dining room. Damn. I was like, what? Then the next day, I got 10 more boxes. For like a whole week, I was getting boxes and shit. I was like, yo. Oh, yeah, they was, I, they was for so plugged He was in. serious. He was like, yo, I'm yeah. letting you know I'm not no. He's like, I only answer to one person. Like, it's only I, one it's three, person it's above three me. Yeah, 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 me. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. I don't answer nobody. So he's like, you know what I'm saying? So he did that. But the thing that happened, so Cam Newton was like, yo. I want D to do me some shoes for the Super Bowl media week. So he hit me. He was like, yo, D, I know this is real late notice, but Cam really wants you to do some shoes for him to wear for media week. He going to be in the Bay Area because Super Bowl 50 is in San Francisco. So he was like, what you could do? I was like, and and I happened to have a phone positive design of the uh, Carolina Panthers. Okay. Because Thomas Deku, who's from Oakland, was playing for the Panthers, and we was doing some phone positive for him, so I had that print already made. Uh, already designed. So mm-hmm. what I did was send it to my people in New York. I was like, yo, put this, print this on leather and send it back. I need you to print it right now and send it back right now. So I had to do overnight mail. I'll pay for it no matter what. So they sent it. I told my school I had finals and shit. I was like, yo, 
I'm about to do this thing for Under Armour. They was like, don't worry, we'll let you miss a day. So I went home, I did it. I was working on the shoes for, for, for Cam Newton. I was like, I want to make the zipper so when you open it up, it's so the Superman chest. So Man, I, went to, I went to came Joanne's. Out so clean. I went to Man. Joanne's and I got the Superman bed sheets to cut it out to get the Superman chest. I made it perfect, made the little zipper, had it open. I was like, boom. Then at 2 o'clock in the morning, we had a blackout on my block while I was sewing the shoes. So I had to wait a whole hour Where? for the electricity to come back on. Damn. So electricity came back on at three. Another hour, I finished four o'clock in the morning. I leave my house. I jet down to San, San Jose to his hotel. I had the joints in a metal briefcase that said top secret on it. And I gave it to the lady at the front desk. And the next morning, Cam Newton had him on at the press conference. So I'm getting all these acts. Um, the Carolina Panthers posted Man. a pic of his shoes. And then it went viral. So I guess when they posted it, people knew I was doing. I don't know how people knew. It was like, nah, FBCC did those. Y'all should add them. And they telling the Panthers, yo, why y'all not giving credit? Yeah, right, and, right, then, right. and then Rovell, the writer from ESPN, yeah, Dan Rovell, yeah. he was reading the comments. He was like, oh, this guy, FBCC did them. So he went through the comments, went and emailed me. It was like, yo, I'm Dan Rovell. And his email was from ESPN. Right. He was like, I want to do an interview on you. Can I call you? So he called me. We did the interview. He put on ESPN. It was on the Washington Post some other newspapers, Big and it shit. just took off from there. But what people don't know is that Under Armour headquarters, they was pissed off. Damn. They was angry. Dre was in trouble for doing that because they was like, how the fuck did Cam Newton get custom shoes? No, the whole year, Cam Newton's been wearing custom cleats. I think Dez was doing his cleats, yeah. but none of them got TV time. Right. Soon as I did appear to Curry Tools for him, them shits was everywhere. Hmm. And Under Armour didn't know how he got them. Yeah. But because... Uh, you know, Cam is a swag dude, fashion yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, Dre sure. used to be in the industry, so he a swag dude. Right. And Cam was like, you know what? I don't trust them. I want you to... And I right, seen yeah. the dude you was telling me about, so I did him. And the so thing that did... Lane. Yeah. The thing that did get kind of twisted because the design had the panther clawing, you know, breaking the claw, and the claw was like three claws. Right. That only fit on things. So people was like, are they Adidas? So they was kind of mad about that. But oh, then what changed right. it? So for that whole week... You know, Dre was like, he was like, I'm taking, he was like, yo, D, man, shit is bad in the office. They coming at me left and right. So he was like, I'm just laying, he's like, I'm just laying low in meetings. But then the Super Bowl came. And in the Super Bowl, I think it was either Coldplay or Maroon 5 did the halftime show with Bruno Mars. All of them had on custom shoes. And Kevin Plank seen that. So after the Super Bowl halftime show, he was like, they all had on custom Jordans from Nike ID, right? So he was like, man, Kevin Plank was like, damn, get Dre whatever he wants. Straight so up. he went from being <laughs> he went from being like, damn, they coming at my head. They about to get me up out of right. here. Nah, too. They, they, like, he had too much power for them hey. to get him out of there, but they was pissed. Yeah. But he went from that to seeing the Super Bowl halftime show and they had an all custom Nikes. And then Kevin Plain was like, Oh, this custom stuff is real. Dope. So he was like, and that's when they brought me out to, to the headquarters and stuff like that. And then when I was there, I see why they're not catching our culture. Yo, they they dress like the people that work there wear <laughs> like uh chinos, like slacks. <laughs> With their shirt tucked in with curries on. Oh, like yeah. tighten every lace tight. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Repub they like they wear they're just like Republicans. You know what I'm saying? So it's I like, believe it, I believe it. So like you gotta like think about it. A lot of those people don't have our culture. They don't know what we know. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, they don't yeah. know like nah, Under Armour never that. been that that that, that type brand. Though. But yeah. at the yeah. same time, Under Armour's only been making shoes for nine years. Exactly. Yeah. So right. they the babies on a block. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And they did a lot of growth in that time. But this year, they it really hit them. One, Nike. Nike plays dirty. Nike like, oh yeah, yeah. So y'all, so y'all, so Curry outsold us last year. We got something for, for y'all. Sure. No, hey, Nike does that. Yeah. Hey, hey, KD finna be a free agent. Yep. Let him go to the Warriors yep. and shut I that shit you. down. I got you. Now he went there. His shooting outsell Curry's, but Curry's shoe ain't number one. Yeah. It's LeBron, Kyrie, Curry, KD, Harden. And I stay saying that, especially for us in the Bay, now every kid go to the store, get a pair of Curry's and a pair of KD's. KD's yeah. Like that, they pair, ask their parents for a pair of both because yeah, yeah. now you have two superstars. Exactly. So Nike's still winning. Yeah, Nike's still day. winning. All, and, all and, like, and if they don't do a good job with the, like the Curry design, Nike could have really killed Under Armour this year. If the KD9 actually look good. You seen the new sneakers app? Thing Did you see the sneakers app shit? It's called oh. Stash Spot. So it's called a Stash Spot. So basically it's probably going to be like a milk truck or something that they didn't design. That you got to find the milk truck in whatever the city is for listen, you to be able to buy the shoes. Because they going to be, the, the truck going to have say 15 yeah. pairs of right. kicks on there. Right. But they did that with the Kyrie, uh, the Krispy Kreme. The Krispy Kreme John. But, so imagine that on, it's on a regular look, this now. This is my thing. 
I'm not fucking jumping through a hula hoop though. Give me my fucking money. <laughs> right? What the fuck do I look like? The last time I chased a fucking truck, I was like eight ice and cream. I wanted some right. fucking ice cream. They want you to chase the ice cream right? truck. And I want some fucking ice cream. Right. Like, I got it. I got it. Come back. Come back. And the motherfucker keep going. You got to run down for five blocks because he thought the shit was funny. Like, I'm That's not doing that to buy no fucking shoes. They want you to run down Rosecrans. I don't care what shoe it is. I don't care what shoe it is. I don't want you to run down Rosecrans. One thing. <laughs> One thing people really get confused, like, yeah, I have a sneaker room. I love sneakers, but I don't give a fuck about sneakers. If Me I can't too. buy it, it don't change my. I don't care. It yeah. don't change my day. Right. Yeah. Right. If, right. I don't even try to get shoes online no more because I know they got bots. Look, yeah, I could have yeah. easily bought a bot years ago. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. I'm OG. I remember when Jordans came out on Wednesday. And we went to the store on Friday and got it. We didn't even go on Wednesday. Like, we fucking wake up on Wednesday. Fuck this. I on Friday. I'm still going to be there. Sleeping, yeah. right. For new sneakerheads, I just say like this. Honestly... Only buy what you really like. Yeah. Because yeah, sure. all of the hype right now, I promise you in 10 years, it's going to be gone. Just like nobody rocks Jabot jeans anymore. But back then, <laughs> we was paying two and some change for some Jabot jeans. But right now, nobody wants them. Oh, Everything God. dies, right? <laughs> and a lot of the stuff that's hype right now is going to die and it's never going to come back. No zombie is never coming back. Like... Buy what you really like. It, because you like it, it'll always have a value to you. If you're buying it because you're trying to impress men, because that's what you sneakerheads are doing yeah, now exactly. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's women. Yo, straight up, you could find the baddest bitch in the club, and you could have on some Yeezys, maybe even the Zebras. She going to look like, what the fuck you got on your feet? Them shits is ugly with all them lines on it. <laughs> and you don't thought you was the shit because you paid 1200 for some Zebras, and all she see is some fucking lines. Like, why would you wear you? How old are you? You got these stripes. You got on these How old are you? Striped socks in the club. You got on the motherfucking Madagascar. He got all the Yeezys. He got on the Madagascar. Yeah, no like, bitches. Yo, crack a lacking. Yo, what's crack a lacking? Yo, is them the fucking Madagascar? I'll never get mad at a reseller because it's Me the either. buyer that, that lets it's them do that to you. Dude, if right. I know I can sell you this shoe I just paid $200 for and I can sell it to you for $1,400? Nigga, a dummy is born right. every day. All right, man. Is it that? D. You got to do it. Let's go. Wait. You we get into a, a lot of Instagram drama. Because uh, I keep it real. Yeah. I'm in an era where we speak our mind, and it's called speaking your mind. Yeah, in this right. new era, if you try to give somebody knowledge, you hating. Right. That's what they do. Oh, I don't yeah. like little Yachty. Oh, you hating. How about I don't like a nigga who rap like he fucking retarded? How about I can't <laughs> like a nigga who write like he rap like he write for niggas who hold a whole pencil when they write? Like, yo, how come I just can't be that person? Why yeah, I yeah. got a hater? Right. Maybe you can't have an opinion in 2017. That's Look, true. you gotta think about bullshit. it. I grew up on Tupac, yeah. Nas, Jay-Z, Biggie. These are dudes who was painting pictures with their words, like, and it was real. You know what I'm saying? Like, people could say Pac ain't a lyricist or whatever, but Pac was so real that his music right now is relevant. Yeah. Timeless. Right. Timeless. Regardless. Yeah. You can't hate on that. Even if you don't like him. Say if you're from the West Coast, you like, man, fuck, yo, you know what I'm saying? Fuck Biggie. But you can't say Biggie didn't make dope-ass music. You can't say that those right. two rappers didn't change a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. And Just these are these are that. people that got classes in college and yes, they, they they're teaching right, people bro. about these. They're teaching them because their lyrics were so thought-provoking. Right? This new music is fiend music. Like, we used to listen to the drug dealers rap. Now we listen to the drug addicts rap. Right. right. It, the, the pendulum swung the whole fucking wrong way. Like, Damn, you know what Jay-Z said? He was like, right, that's cool to be. Jay-Z said, he was like, I came in. What y'all doing? He was like, he was like, I respect, the, he's like, y'all respect the guy who got shot at. I respect the shooter. I respect right, the shooter. Right. You know what I'm saying? When he said that, that's when the game already started changing. Yep. Think about it. He made, what, Death of Auto Tune. The only nigga I heard it was Two Pain, T Pain. Everybody else kept running with Auto Tune, and they popping, and T Pain dead. That's and crazy. he the one who started the shit. That's crazy. Like it's you could come in and copy a nigga now, and niggas will buy your shit. Back then, if you the whole thing was you couldn't copy. Yeah, Tupac yeah. didn't want to sound like nobody. Jay Z didn't want to sound like nobody. They'll go in the studio and be like, "Yo, see that shit Jay Z just came out with? I need something that's gonna shit on that." Right. And they come out with something different that's different, right? Now they go and they be like, oh, let me get something that sounds like that Panda beat. Let me get some yeah, of that let Amigos. Me get, yeah. Yo, let me get something right. that sounds like the Amigos. And all this shit sound the same. That's why I got them tight beats when you yeah. look on uh, Instagram. And all yeah. that. You know they gave Amigos a, a college course? Did y'all know that? Probably in Atlanta. Migo, Migos what, had bad a college. And bougie? Nah, in at at NYU. Class? NYU. Yeah, at, uh, at a bad and bougie, uh, uh, new like basically culture etiquette class or whatever. It was right when culture dropped. See, Damn, that's, that's bad. they had a, at NYU. It is bad, at but NYU, that's just that's the time we live in right now. We live in a time. Think about when me and you grew up. 
How'd you used to get your information? Like me, if I asked my mom, be like, "Hey, yo, mom, yo, what, what Abraham Lincoln did and such and such," she'd be like, "You better go get a fucking encyclopedia." Yeah. Encyclopedia. <laughs> right? I don't, do they even <laughs> make encyclopedias no anymore? Dude, whenever Wiki, I wanted Wikipedia. to know something, whenever I wanted Wikipedia. to know something, she'd be like, "You better go over there and find a letter of what you're looking <laughs> exactly. for and search through that motherfucker till shit. you find the answer." We live in an era these kids get on their phone and be like, okay, Abraham Lincoln, boom. They got 20 facts pages that come with everything you need to know about Abraham Lincoln on their phone. And yet, this era has information on their hip. We had to go through books. And they the dumbest generation coming up. This is a short they, attention span. You have the most information ever. ever. It's a short attention span. And you can learn anything by Googling it. And yet, Y'all you let people Google, lie to look, you without even using Google. Look, nigga, uh, who's that? Killer Mike said it. He's like, bro, you got to use your phone more than just for uh, World Star. You feel me? For real. Yeah, that's real shit. Cause, like, I haven't you, been on World Star in like six years. Like, like that whole website is like, like it's cool. like you really got the world in your fucking hands with these fucking phones, bro. Niggas really don't I mean, we had a shit, phone. We was, was crazy. we was happy when we finally got text messages. Right. Yeah, we yeah, used yeah. to have the two-way page where we text. text. We, get a, get, we get a couple boy, sentences. Boy, I had to lie to get a two-way. Boy, I tried to say it was like a game system or something. Be cool. Remember, man? I told my grandpa, I was like, this two way boy is like, you know, I'm like, nah, it's like a yo, game yo, boy. I'm not even gonna yeah. lie. When whole ass shit, he was like, I two way her. So she right. writes back, right. smiley faces. Yo, I had the two way where I was in college at the time. Time port? You know it. <laughs> right? Port, so that's what I port. used to do. Because I. Ain't no, I ain't nobody have my number, so I'll be on the bus and I'll put that shit on the alarm. And as it go, I'll be like, yeah, what's good? I'm on the bus. Wait, so let me ask my OGs, what? What were Scooby Doo's? Scooby Doo's hard bottom shoes. Okay, okay. Like, so brown, Adams. brown, brown, yeah. right? brown, brown, hard brown, bottoms. Yeah. Brown hard bottoms. Hey, I, I used I, to I, tell every chick I talked to that the Steve Maddens I had that were them brown Steve yeah, Madden yeah. were Scooby Doo's. Those, those Scooby Doo's. <laughs> <Yes, yes. laughs> any, any, any grown man shoe that was a hard bottom shoe was brown Scooby Doo's. Brown, brown, it was Scooby Doo's. Those are shoes, by the way. Yeah, those are shoes. Okay. Okay. So hey, right, since we was talking about Pac, what you think about the uh, the funk flex thing? Yo, did you did you hear yo, that? As a New Yorker, I want to sincerely say, <laughs> Funk Master Flex right. could eat a fucking dick. Just like yo, straight up, you don't disrespect anybody who's dead. One, two, you didn't say it when he was alive. Don't say it when he ain't here to defend himself. Right. Three, your ass been locked up on three different occasions for putting your hands on women. So you a fucking sucker ass nigga. So don't even talk about. Uh, somebody that legendary when all you doing right now is trying to survive of being irrelevant because yeah. Power 105 murdered you. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all fucking struggling over there and that shit you did was so out of pocket like yo I don't even know where that shit came from. Is it because a Tupac movie about to drop? But like, just so. the whole disrespect of that shit is just so out of and pocket. Just, like, I never like Funk Master Flex. He fucked everything up. He talked too loud on records. They're like, <laughs> yo, yo, like nigga, let the song play. Like, <laughs> he's corny and he and he dick ride everybody. Yeah. And then when he don't dick ride him, then he try to like disrespectfully shit on them because they don't fuck with him. So I'm gonna just get in straight into it. We gonna ask what happened with the Paperboy situation, D. All right, so the whole Paperboy shit started like this. I was on Instagram Live. My, actually, my first time ever being on Instagram Live. And uh, a couple people kept asking me about the Scoop 208 joint. If you're not familiar, <clears throat> Scoop 208, he's like the probably the most popular YouTuber for shoe. Shoe tubers is what they call him. He's like, he got like 400,000 subscribers. And then he's also popping on Instagram too, over like 100 and something thousand subscribers on his, on his Instagram channel. So what happened was he has a Facebook group that's also super popping. And he had a dude in there named Brody Trump. He was selling uh, fake Yeezys to people. And he was also admin. So when people would like try to expose him, he would delete their whole post. So it wouldn't go up. So the whole thing with uh, Brody... He said, you know, he took all of the, for the Zebra Yeezys, he took all these uh, pre-sales for people. And then he said his plug flaked on him. So he went with another guy that he always did business with who was legit. And that dude mixed in some real with some fake zebras. So when people got him, they started complaining. Now, when the shit hit the fan, he disappeared. Like, he didn't have no real pictures on his Instagram. Like, he had, like, one of those scammer profiles. <laughs> now, because Scoop has a reputable name in the game, he was backing him up. He made him an admin on his site. So that week, people kept hitting me. Because whenever something happens in Sneaker World, like, people think I know everything on Sneaker World. So people started hitting me in comments about, like, yo, you heard about Scoop 208? And I'm like, nah, what happened? It's like, just go on YouTube. You're going to see it. So I went on YouTube, and I seen all these different people making all these videos about 
the whole Brody Trump thing and getting scammed off the fake Yeezys. Yeah. So then after that, I was, you know, then after that, another dude asked, he said, yo, what do you think about Kanye West's nephew reselling Yeezys? So I was like, Kanye West don't have no nephew. So how he has a nephew reselling Yeezys? <coughs> so now when you take in the whole thing with Scoop 208, being this reputable dude, but then also his name being tarnished because of the fake Yeezy 350 V2s, which is the ease, which is the shoes right now that they have perfected to the point where you really can't tell the fake from the real, depending on what site you get them from. Right. So I was like, if this dude, like, so I, you know, I know because I'm a Kanye West fan that he doesn't have any siblings. So therefore, if you have no siblings, therefore you cannot have a nephew. So right, automatically right. thinking about Brody Trump, I'm like, that's doesn't seem right. Like you saying you're Kanye's nephew and this is how you get the Yeezys to resell, but Kanye doesn't have any nephews. So now I'm already skeptical because of the whole Brody Trump thing. So I'm like, you know, and then what happened was after that, the next day, Soul Collector, the website had posted, uh, uh, the article said, and I'm trying to paraphrase it real quick. It said, meet the man who eats Shoes out of rare kicks. He eats cereal out of real kicks, out of rare, rare kicks. Right. So, and it was Paperboy. So I read the article, and it was a line there. The the, uh, the journalist or whatever you call him, blogger, um, can't call him a journalist because they did a shitty job. And that's what my whole post was really about. He said, "Are you really Kanye's nephew?" And he said, "Yes, I'm really Kanye's nephew." Now me, because I'm a fact checker. You know what I'm saying? Especially with this Trump administration. So right. I'm like, right? So I'm like, why didn't you, before you even interviewed this guy, and you already know he's, he calls himself Kanye's nephew because you put it in the title. Right. <laughs> why didn't you Google research that? That'd be a fact check. Right. So <laughs> if at that interview point, you would have been like, okay, you're not Kanye's nephew because he doesn't have any siblings. So tell us why you call yourself that. Now, I've heard after I talked about it, people say he calls himself Kanye's nephew because he actually threw his Nike Ear Yeezys up on the stage at the St. Pablo concert. And Kanye autographed him and threw him back to him. And from there, he was like, yeah, I'm Kanye's nephew. Right. Now, if that reporter, blogger, would have did his research, he would have been like, okay, now I know you're not Kanye's nephew because you have a sibling. So just tell me why you call yourself. And he'd probably be like, you know what? It came from when I was at the St. Pablo tour. You know, I threw my shoe up. He signed it. Everybody was like, oh, he's Kanye's nephew. And I just ran with the moniker. It's a nickname. It's not really for real. Yeah, then I'm yeah, like, okay, right. that makes sense. But at the same time, this whole article, this was where, like, I have no issues with Paperboy, whatever. You want to call yourself Kanye's nephew, whatever. You sell, you resell kicks. I don't resell kicks. We're not even in the same lane, like, at all. We don't do anything the same. You do your thing. I do my thing. But my thing is, you're part of Dream Team SF. Dream Team SF does a whole lot for the community, right? Right. So, in this article, where I feel like it was very coonish to make a whole article about a guy eating food out of a shoe. Right? Especially in this day and age, it's like, okay, so this whole article was about uh, this black dude entertaining us by fucking eating food out of a shoe. Right? But yet, if you would have did a good article and a good amount of research, you could have asked better questions or pivoted and made him tell you, well, 
I don't just, I'm more than a fucking sneaker reseller that eats cereal out of a shoe. That, that, actually, was, that, that was his right. choice, though. Right. Because that's not, we're not going to blame that on Soul Collector. He could have, he could have took that, that to that point. Right. He, right. he could have, he could have spent and been like, you know what? Actually, yeah, I do that shit. That shit is a joke. That shit ain't nothing. But what is really something is that I'm a part of a crew that really gives back to the community. Right. In San Francisco, we have one of the worst homeless rates in the state. And we are the richest city in the United States because we got Silicon Valley. We got all of this going on. But we have such a very bad drug and homeless problem in San Francisco. And I know this because I went to school there. Um, but we give back. We give shoes to the homeless. We give food to the homeless. We do drives. We do raffles. We do this and this and that. That's what that interview should have went to. Yeah. And so. and me personally, if I would have did the interview, it would have went that way because I'm not I'm not entertained by a nigga eating fucking cereal out of a shoe. Regardless if you think it's cool, you think it's funny, to me it's coonish. And Word. especially coming from somebody who actually really does and really does give back to his community. You know what I'm saying? So like that, my whole article was really Soul collector, because in this whole day and age, especially as people of color, we really got to be careful on how we portray. Yeah, because exactly. they will so, definitely, so, so. they will definitely make us look like they're fucking pets and they're fucking clowns and ha ha, we're funny, ha ha, and all this. Because I've seen it on my page. I'll post something, they be like, uh, I'll post something. It might be political, it might be drug related. Like, yo, you need to stop fucking with lean. And somebody will post, man, just keep posting shoes. We on, we ain't on your page for that. I'm like, you know what? You're right. You're blocked because um, <laughs> block game I strong. love blocking block people. Game that shit, block game like Matumbo. You feel know I me? Mean? <laughs> like, don't tell me. First of all, shoes is ten percent of my life. You think us have a shoe page because I'm a talented customizer. That's only 10% of my life. You give, I promise you, everybody who follows my page gets more, gets more of a fuck about shoes than I do. I really don't care about shoes. I like art. And, right. and I just happen to like shoes. But I like shoes. I'm not in love with them. Right. If I lose my shoe collection today, I'm not going to miss a heartbeat. You feel me? Like, it's not about that. It's just I like to put my visions to fashion. In the fashion sense, I like to do it on shoes because I feel like everything starts from the ground up. So the first thing that hits the ground is your feet. Boom. But I make clothes too. You feel me? And I just feel like on that, I just feel like in that whole thing, people in general think like us, people of color and everything. If we got a page that's about talent, about something that we could do, they think that's all we could do. That's think that that's all we are. We're more than just a fucking, you know, fucking paper boy's more than a dude who fucking eats food out of a shoe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's way, it's way deeper than that. He grew up in fucking San Francisco. And if I'm not mistaken, in fucking the um What's the district up there? Hell, what's the? You live in the meatpacking district, right? Some way up there, not meatpacking district. What's the hell? What's it called up there? Uh, what Hunter's Point? Hunter's Point, I don't know. Hunter's Point is yeah. one. Is and it's, it's the other. I'm not one. sure where Paperboy from. I'm not sure. Right, but but San Francisco. If you grew up in the hood in San Francisco, it wasn't nothing nice. Yeah, right. you feel me? So he sure. overcame sure. that. Yeah. Right. He don't sell drugs. Right. He, he sells shoes. He has a little clothing store. He's into fucking Japanese anime. He's making his own character. So like, did he, uh, because I didn't see the Soul Collector interview, did he talk about the store once? I think they might even said he has a shoes, he has a, a, a consignment shop or whatever they okay. called it. I think they might have talked about it, but they didn't go more in depth about it. And that right. should have been something more to go in depth. That That's been a the, black yeah, entrepreneur, like 30 shit. years old, in San Francisco, in the fucking, we're still in a recession no matter what nobody tell you. Yeah. Right, still for sure. Hell yeah. for sure. making his own way, having no boss. Like that with I felt like that's where the interview should have went. Like this dude is making a living without having a boss. And that's True. that's dope in this day and age where we could be our own bosses. You feel me? Right. Like yeah, so right. my thing was that maybe I'm old, you know what I'm saying? I'm out of touch with this fucking fool foolery and shit, but yeah. I just felt like that interview <laughs> I feel like that interview could have been way better, especially being that it's fucking somebody from the Bay Area. The Bay Area don't hardly ever get anybody to fucking speak up for the Bay. Exactly. So when you do get yeah, somebody to speak exactly. up for the Bay, it's about eating cereal out of a fucking shoe. Right. I'm not even from the Bay. I moved here in 2003, but I met so many cool ass people and this is my home. Like I'm never moving back to New York. Like I'm going to live the rest of my life here. So at the end of my life, I will have lived in the Bay Area longer than I lived in New York, regardless. Right. Right. So like I still feel a part of the Bay and I feel like knowing like all my friends that's from the Bay, knowing the pain. Like when I first moved there, they like, man, we get, yo, they steal from us all the time. So I like, man, y'all over, y'all tripping. Ain't nobody stealing from y'all. But then when you're here for so long, you really realize yeah, you see this. LA yeah. steal from y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They steal slang from y'all. Like if you don't live here, you don't know that. But I, I lived here long enough. 
Oh three, where we in now? Twenty seventeen. That's long yeah. enough, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this is my and this is my growing up years, right? Like this ain't my high school years. I was an adult here, so to know the pain of the Bay Area and how we don't get acknowledged when we do get acknowledged, I think it, I, me personally, I just think it should be more for um, the shit that you're doing to give back to your community and not for eating fucking food out of a shoe. Yeah, I don't care how anybody feel about that. If you can't feel that that's real, then you fake as fuck. So when when you were explaining this right now, I could I could tell like like you really you you really feel about it. So you more mad that Soul Collector made him look like that, or you're more mad that he took that opportunity and didn't didn't preach the positive shit that he's doing? Right. So I was. Like when I first did it, now talking about it, I see it more 50 50. But at the time, I was more mad at Soul Collector because I felt like, listen, one, it's so many of these sneaker blogs, they be posting fake sneakers. They're like helping the sneaker culture die. Yeah. Right. Like they're not really helping it grow. It's like get in on what's a fad right now. So maybe for, excuse me, last week, the fad was, oh, look. All over the explore pages, this nigga eating sh- cereal out of the white Yeezys or the cause. Right, and then even in the article, this started off like, "Yo, we don't even know if the sh- we can't validate if the shoes is real or fake." So now, not saying that the shoes he was eating the food out of, which I hate even saying that shit, it was fake. It's the fact that you didn't even verify they are, and you still was like, "Fuck it, we still gonna do the interview on them <laughs> yeah. still about posted. eating right. cereal out of a shoe." That's it. you don't even know if the shoe is real or fake, but you still want to do the interview about the him eating the shit out of the food, like, "Yo." If you just take a little bit of time, like, okay, let me ask him more deeper questions. Like, I just felt like their whole point for Soul Collector was like, yo, and maybe this is me fucking having a sick twist of mind. It was like, yo, look at this nigga eating food out of his shoe. Yo, put that shit on the fucking article. Like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yo, if that was a black owned website, I doubt they would have put that interview. He was like, what do you want to put up? Fuck out of here. Right. Like, in his whole questions, he didn't give a fuck what, what you know, what uh, Paperboy did. He didn't care. He didn't even want to go deep in that. He wanted to make sure his article was about meet the man who eats food out of shoes. And I just felt like that shit was just like whack. This was one of our best podcasts because we got a lot of knowledge going through this thing. Jewels. Jewels. Yeah, definitely. I'm glad glad y'all invited me. I appreciate it. We definitely like to end it off with shit. Ask you a question on where would you want to see the sneaker game say three years from now? Three years from now, I just hope, like, because I don't think the fakes are going anywhere. So I would just like to see the, honestly, the same day resale be extinct. Hmm. That's, if one thing I can say about Sneak Game, I hope same day resale goes away. Like, I have nothing against resellers. I think we need resellers because there's always stuff that you're going to need from, you know, we from a couple that. years yeah, ago, yeah, you know, yeah, you know yeah. retro OGs, whatever. You're going to need that. It's always going to be a shoe. you be like, damn, I wish I would have got it. Now I'm thinking about it. I want to have it. But the only thing that I wish would leave is that same day resale, like buying a Yeezy on Saturday and selling it for triple the same day. I feel like once that goes away, I feel like it'll go back more to its organic state. Yeah. Because the shoe game is not organic anymore. It's just like a whole bunch of infiltrators, you know, it's almost like the music industry, like you got to slut something out. Right now, the shoe game is getting slutted out. It's getting smutted out all over. Everybody, people don't give a fuck about shoes. We even know anything about shoes, right? I just want to slut it out. It's, it's, it's in the game and they're, oh, I'm the big pushers. I'm the, I'm the reseller, right? But their whole collection starts from 2012 on. They don't even have anything from the 90s unless it's a retro. They have no OGs, yeah. right? Their whole sneaker collection started in 2012. They got no silver boxes. No yeah, silver right. boxes. No Jordan face boxes. Man. So yeah, for me, for me, wait, for me, Georgia I want to answer the question boxes. too. <laughs> yeah. For me, for me, three years from now, I yeah. want people to buy what they fucking like. Damn. Yo, like can the only- church say amen? Preach. Amen. 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 Preach. Buy what you like. Right. And right. don't, and don't, don't. Niggas got to take a lie detector test, huh? Nah, don't, <laughs> don't just, don't. Before, do don't, you fucking like these shoes? Don't right. buy a shoe to, to. To show off to other dudes, right. yo, like don't I, buy that resale shoe just yo, to show yeah, off. Right. When I when I drop my shoe, I want to do the drop at the Oakland Museum. But the one caveat about it is you got to put the shoe on in the fucking museum and walk out with the shoe, or I'm not selling it to you because I'm only making a hundred pairs of the first FBCC shoe. So 
I don't want that resale shit. I want you to buy my shoe because you actually really like the right. motherfucker. And put it on. And put it on. Yeah. Wear your Better kicks. Better come with a fit. Better come say with a fit to match. Three, three years. Like niggas gotta do their googles, bro. <laughs> like you gotta, you gotta, right. you gotta, you gotta get your shit straight, man. Like, like it's cool. Like you know what I'm saying. Get what you like. I feel that, but it's like at the same time, do your googles on the shit you like. Too. For real. Do Stop you know being I mean? a sucker. Stop being a sucker. Yeah, you know what I mean? And lose your heart on money Google. Cause you don't yeah. get your googles. Yeah, Finish it, always, man. We appreciate you coming on, man. Any yeah, last man. Yeah, man. Like we I definitely said, guys, gonna have you again. Oh, I, I'll come back whenever y'all need me to fill in. Somebody don't you know, fuck up. Dre yawning. He yawning. It might be tired. <laughs> and I'm the oldest one here. Me and Grinch and. They the youngest ones and they fucking tired, but they <laughs> fuck up. They don't want to come in. Y'all need us feeling. I'm here for you guys. You know what I'm saying? Because we definitely come through. Because y'all young yeah. boys, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all, you, the two youngest was the tiredest. It was like, man, if y'all don't know out there in TV world, it's like two o'clock in the morning. We really burning the night or you in this right, joint. So, <laughs> yeah. so we oil. might. <laughs> if you see an edit on his face. Or his face is because that nigga yawn. We're going to keep it all the way 100. We're keeping it all the way 100. We're going to put the Snapchat filter to make him look like a Kardashian. We're going to get the Kardashian filter on both of these motherfuckers. I don't know which one of them is Chloe. He Chloe. Fuck it. We're going to make Dre Chloe just because he closer. Well, shit, that was definitely our dopest episode. Hell yeah. Yo, this was fun. And um, I didn't get to talk about this in the whole joint, but I am dropping my own shoe, and I'm bringing it back. Uh, I really don't even know what I'm gonna call the shoe because I just really think of nostalgia. The shoe is all real leather, you know, because I know Grinch don't like the fucking sock shoes, right? <laughs> we are, the boots. I don't, I don't like hype. Yeah, no yeah, hype. Yeah, so yeah, I really want to bring it back to the vet. I want uh, the first call shoe. the shoe nostalgia. I that's thinking I'm thinking. I'm thinking <laughs> that's what I want to call it. That would been the name that's been stuck in my head because I really brought it back to the good quality leathers. Yeah, the little strap on there. The, the, you know what I'm saying? Carpe diem. Yeah, right. nostalgia. nostalgia. I think that's. I think that we might call it that. The carpe diems. Um. The. Uh. We don't even have the website yet because I don't know what website we're gonna make for the store, but. Uh, and the shoe, I just, I actually had to make my own sample and send it to China. And because they, they made me a sample, it looked cheap. And I'm like, no, I want this shit to be quality. So I said, I'm going to make it and y'all copy my shit because I know y'all good at copy. <laughs> yeah. I, I right, see right, what y'all right, did right, with right, the right, Yeezys. I, I, right, I see <laughs> what y'all did with I the Yeezys. I synced it. it. <laughs> so if you could copy the Yeezy like that, I feel like y'all synced it. Y'all could do it. So I said, fuck it. I know y'all good at copying. Y'all not good at originating. So I'm going to make it. So I made it. I shipped it. It cost me $140 to ship one shoe to China from here. I believe it. Crazy. But yeah, when the shoe drop, I actually will bring it on the podcast. We can show it. But at that time, if y'all don't know, we working on something else real special. Yeah. Um, we ain't gonna talk about it on this episode Mm-mm. because we don't want nobody stealing our ideas. Yeah, top but secret. <laughs> top secret. It's gonna be a whole nother channel with us four dudes in there, and we're gonna have something real special for y'all. Top it's crazy. Secret. Top it's G. Secret. What we'll probably say G fourteen classified. Yeah, I mean, G fourteen. And the next time I come back, I promise I'm gonna have gifts for you guys because I got real some shit. Secret. But y'all hit me at the last minute. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Hit we me appreciate the last it. Minute, but since I fuck with y'all, I made that sacrifice. But next time I come, I have some gifts for y'all. Shit, we're going to have and, a gift for you, too. Yeah, for sure. And then when <laughs> the next time we come, probably that'd be when we uh, tell the world about our announce, other joint. Announce right, our, we'll do yeah. that, right? We'll announce it. And uh, But it's going to be dope, yo. So uh, please subscribe to this channel. Yeah, man. The Heat Hoard is Uncut. To our YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, subscribe to the Heat Hoard is Uncut. Um, the link. Will be in the in the description down here. The link for the podcast will be in the description somewhere down here. Ow. Hit that red box. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Not Supreme. Hit that red box. And subscribe. <laughs> Not that box yep. logo. That's right. <laughs> but hit that. Support them because we're gonna have some even bigger. You know what I'm saying? That we yep. all gonna do together in conjunction, and we think y'all really gonna enjoy what we got coming for y'all. So, like I said, this was a dope thing because we got to actually network on all our cuts. Yeah. You know? And we actually came with something dope. And we think y'all really going to like it. This is the takeover. And yeah. it was the takeover. So it's make sure this shit called the takeover because I ran takeover. this motherfucking show. <laughs> listen, listen. Listen. Hey, look, we listen, might, listen, we might listen, just take listen. my whole intro I'm the song Beyonce out the the group. Takeover. I'm going to tell y'all right now. I'm the Beyonce. That's Kelly. <laughs>
Michelle. Who and, and hold and, on. And the rapping bitch we kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> What was her name? Latoya Lockett. One of them. Lucky. I'm caught in between the two. That's Latoya right there. But I'm the Beyonce of the group, so y'all oh, better remember shit. that shit. Oh, but we man. finna hit y'all with the joint. Yeah, y'all whole miss. We did the whole, can you stand the rain? Y'all ain't ready for yeah, the yeah. shit. We're hey. about to hit y'all with. <laughs> Tell me. Y'all, y'all ain't ready. Shit. Tap in. And we out. <laughs> Until yeah, next time. Boom. It was the Love. Takeover episode by Peace. FBCC. Peace. And, and so. Woo.